Let's talk about what to do with exponents when they're in rational expressions. Another name for that is fractions. Consider these concepts. With fractions, of course, you want to simplify them. People say, well, I, I canceled when I simplify them. Actually, what you did was divide by the number 1. That's what canceling is, dividing by 1. Well, tell you what that means. Consider 2 over 2 is 1. 13 over 13 is 1. X to the fifth over X to the fifth is 1. And in fact, anything over itself is 1. As long as you have one uh, something in the top and in the bottom, you'll always be equivalent to the number 1. Well, in this problem, let's break up each of the expressions and see what they're equal to. And then we'll look for 1's. Doesn't x squared really equal 2x's multiplied? y to the 7th is 7 of them. x to the 5th is 5x's and y to the 3rd is 3 y's. Now, when we simplify, we're really dividing by 1 in various forms. x over x is 1. There's another 1, x over x. So anytime you have something in the top and in the bottom multiplied, you can cancel it. As far as x's are concerned, we're going to be left with three of them in the bottom, and that's what I have. Now as far as y's are concerned, I can cancel anything in the top with something in the bottom, as long as they're the same and they're multiplied. And that leaves me with y to the fourth. And that's your answer. Well, I'm going to give you a shortcut in this case so that you don't have to write all those out. Couldn't you say that we took x to the second, x to the fifth, subtracted, and put the answer where the largest one was? Always works. y to the seventh and y to the third, we subtracted and put the answer where the largest one was. It's a lot easier that way, isn't it? So, we have a rule for this, and it'll be our third rule, the third rule of exponents. To divide expressions with exponents, all you really have to do is subtract the exponents. And I always say, subtract the smallest from the largest and put the answer, the result, where the biggest one was. The biggest one always wins. Excellent. Okay? For instance, 3 to the 9th divided by 3 to the 4th is 3 to the 5th. Now you can check that by multiplying backward. Because 3 to the 5th ta mm -hmm. times 3 to the 4th, it does work, doesn't it? So you really don't have to memorize this rule, just always check it. Mm -hmm. x to the 12th divided by x to the 5th we can subtract exponents and we get the answer. Now let's check it by multiplying. Doesn't x to the seventh times x to the fifth equal x to the twelfth? Yes it does. So it works. Well, let's use that rule when we do this problem. That's really a to the one-th and a to the fourth. So we're going to go 4 minus 1, largest minus smallest, and put the answer where the largest one, the 4, was. a to the 3rd. b to the 6th and b to the 5th. 6 minus 5 is 1. Now come on, we don't write b to the 1th, we only write 
B. Okay, so don't be writing ones, you'll embarrass yourself. Now, with the 4 and the 6, you can't go 6 minus 4. You know why? Well, they're not exponents, so they don't follow rules of exponents. They follow the rules of normal numbers or coefficients. So we're going to cancel, we're going to divide 4 and 6 both by 2, and we'll have our answer. So remember, exponents follow exponent rules, coefficients or numbers follow the normal coefficient rules. Here's a tricky one. Looks easy, doesn't it? But I want you to take a look at it. We're going to have A, two B's, five A's on the bottom, and three B's on the bottom. Now if I cancel, every time I have something in the top with something in the bottom, it's certainly legal because that's one. And I'll have an A to the fourth, and where will that be? Well, it'll be in the bottom, won't it? And with the B's, I'll have a B. And where will he be? Got to keep an eye on him. He's in the bottom because that's where the biggest one was. Is that your final answer? Well, if you write it the way it is right now, a to the fourth b, you're representing that a to the fourth and b are in the numerator, and they're not supposed to be in the numerator. But you're saying I ran out of stuff for the numerator. Well, we're going to have to create a numerator, and what do we have left? Nothing. Well. You're going to have to create a 1. So you have to have a top. Remember, if you don't have anything, put a 1. Got the idea? And that's the answer in this case. Let's look at the replay. We'll do that again. I really, if I used my other shortcut, I went a to the 5 minus 1, put the answer where the largest 1 was, b to the 3 minus 2, put the answer where the largest one was. And then I said, uh-oh, can't go around here without a top. I'm going to have to put a 1. Very important. There it is. Let's try something that involves all the rules. Remember the order of operations. We always have to do what's in parentheses first. Then we execute our exponents. I don't care whether we're covering exponents. We have to do what's in parentheses first. So pay no attention to that 3 on the outside. Inside of parentheses, Hello. 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 we're going to have a fraction. That's going to reduce normally, 6 ninths dividing top and bottom by 3. I'm going to have 2 thirds. And that has nothing to do with exponents. That's just normal canceling. Now this is exponents, and I'm going to go 6 minus 2 and I'm going to have x to the fourth in the bottom. And this is going to be 7 minus 2, and I'm going to have z to the fifth in the top. Now I've done what's in parentheses. Now I've done what's in parentheses. I'm not finished. I have to do the exponents, and there is one. I have to do that three. And, I, and he has power. Look at the size of those parentheses. He has power over everybody. So I'm going to raise everybody to the third power. Z to the fifth to the third power. Remember the second rule of multiplication of exponents? Is Z to the fifteenth. X to the fourth to the third power. I'm multiplying is X to the twelfth. Now you're not going to use this rule for that 2 because he's not an exponent. You're just going to have to raise 2 to the third power. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And 3 times 3 times 3, here again, doesn't follow the rules of exponents. 
because 3 isn't an exponent, it's a coefficient. And I'll get 27. And that's your answer. So follow, always follow the order of operations. Now, they may bunch these together into one problem. Something like this. But I want you to understand that it really is three little problems. And then I just do them separately. This one, 21 divided by 3 is 7. x to the third divided by x to the one-th is x to the tooth. And the y's cancel, so I get 7x squared. This one, oh, 6 divided by 3 is 2. x to the second divided by x is x. And y to the fourth divided by y is y to the third. So we end up with negative 2xy to the third. And then finally, when everything cancels, what happens when everything cancels? Or think of it this way, anything over itself, what does it equal? 1. Okay. Don't forget that 1. Here is today's final Jeopardy answer. Let's try one more. I want you to understand that this is going to become three little problems. Let's try it. Make it so. In this part of it, the twos cancel, and x to the third divided by x to the, remember, one-th, is just x to the tooth. In the next one, so. six divided by two is three, and x to the second divided by x is x, so we get a minus three x. Now in this one, the x's cancel, and I can't do anything with the three and the two, so I don't. It's not that hard, I just don't do anything that I'm not allowed to do. And I just write 3 over 2. Okay? That's about as tough as it gets. Make sure you don't put together unlike terms also. Okay? Go try the homework.